Okay, good morning, all of you. Good morning. Yeah, we'll just start. Um, I just kept some details here. This is what I'm going to do in case Christopher sir hasn't informed you. Uh, we are going to, for my part, I have to do two novels, Moby Dick and Invisible Bo uh, uh, Three novels and three drama and two short stories. So yesterday we have seen Invisible Man, and but um, unfortunately we have only five sessions allotted. So I will have to hurry up. So we'll take up um, Humboldt's gift for this morning class. Um, uh, written by Saul Bellow. Um, and uh, Saul Bellow won Pulitzer Prize for this novel and a Nobel Prize in literature in 76. You have two important characters you should remember in this novel. Charlie Citrine, who's a successful writer and his mentor, Von Humboldt Flesher. Now the story begins at a time when Humboldt has already died. So the, these are the principal characters. Humboldt, he's a celebrated Jewish writer who shot to fame at one point. But then his death was a terrible death. There was no, nobody even to uh, you know, mourn his loss and bury him. We'll come to that. That's why it's written, he dies in obscurity. And then you have Kathleen, Humboldt's wife, who leaves him. And then you have Charlie Citrine, the narrator, who was the friend of Humboldt's. And then you have Dennis, the ex-wife of Citrine, Charlie, that is Charlie Citrine. They are, um, she has taken as much money as possible from him after the uh, separation. And then you have Renata, a young person, a young lady with whom Charlie falls in love. Then you have some of these lesser characters. I, I don't want to say they are less, but then you have to remember a few important ones. These are two more important ones that you have to remember. So Demi is again another uh, girlfriend of Charlie. Cantable is a gangster. Okay. So I'll go uh, right away into the novel. Uh, am I sharing it or uh, have I started sharing it? Yeah, I'm sharing it, right, thank you. Uh, at the time the novel begins, Humboldt has died. And his mentee, Charlie, 
who is now a rich and successful writer. Okay. And he gives an account of the life of Humboldt. That is why the title is given as Humboldt's gift. So what is a gift of Humboldt? What is the relationship with Charlie and Humboldt? That has to be constantly kept in mind. So as you can read here, Humboldt was a very, very intelligent person, a great orator too. And he became a very, very highly successful person as a young man, a sudden meteoric rise. But then what happens when people suddenly become very rich? They, uh, uh, both Humboldt and uh, Charlie are uh, going to a very careless bohemian life. Bohemian life is where they begin to enjoy the world to a great extent. Drinking, partying, you know, having too many affairs and all that. Okay. So Humboldt's later life collapsed into poverty. Kathleen, as I said, his wife left him. Neglect and alcoholism. Humboldt had very high um, ideas about art and politics. And he got a teaching post. Uh, he was very, very influential as an artist, as a poet, and as a philosopher. He was the one who helped Charlie to become great. His influence was so much that he helped Charlie get a teaching post at Princeton University. Okay, so when um, this part I'll come to you later. So Charlie now, after the death of Humboldt, he recalls the friendship that they both shared. So we have a lot of flashback coming through. So Saul Bellow uses flashback technique to tell us about their friendship and the love of Chicago's life landscape. If you've noticed, Humboldt is the one who helped Charlie become great mentored him. Um, and when Charlie becomes famous, okay, um, Humboldt tries to uh, put him down. Despite all the love and the relationship they, they both had, suddenly Humboldt, probably because of the horrible state of affairs that he has landed himself in, he is not very, very happy. You know, human beings tend to be human beings all the time. So he's not so very happy when Charlie becomes famous, rich as a writer. And he even um, tries to ins insult Charlie. So that was the reason when um, Humboldt died, even Charlie was not with him. Kathleen was not with him. So that is why at the beginning of the paragraph we've, of the class, we've seen that Humboldt was deserted and alone when he died. There was nobody even to bury him. Okay. Now that Humboldt, uh, Charlie has become very rich, okay, 
he has a um, uh, look at Cha Humboldt's life. He gets a chairperson's position at Princeton University. See, because of his recommendation, Charlie got a teaching position. Humboldt also got a good position, but then funding for it was withdrawn. So what happens? He becomes poor. And that leaves him devastated. In his devastation, he's so angry with his wife that he even tried to run over his car. No, sorry. Run Please mute your mics, all of you. You you should have been used to this all by now, please. I know we are all working from home, but uh, please be alert. Arshia. Madam, excuse me. Huh. Madam, excuse me. Yes. Why was he? Why he was devastated, Hamul? It's quite here clear, ma. He got a chairperson position at a department in Princeton University. But some of those will be funded. So the position was there, but money was not there. The salary was not okay. given. Okay. So Thank financially, you. yeah. So financially, he is uh, crippled. See, what is a big gift if you are, uh, sorry, what is a big deal if you are a great artist, but you don't have financial um, support and help coming out from your you know, position and um, your gift, right? So they gave him a position, but it is not paid. So that leaves him devastated, and he tries to run his car over his own wife, Kathleen. So she leaves him and files for a divorce. And look at how Humboldt's life deteriorates. He starts threatening people with a gun. So he's almost deteriorated into a madman. Insanity. And then he's taken into a police custody and then is sent into mental hospital. However, uh, he comes out of it. But when he comes out of it, this is when he turns against Charlie Citroen. And he begins to hire lawyers and psychiatrists. Charlie also is mentally disturbed because he was looking up to Humboldt. So what kind of life did they go together? Now I'll come back to the life they enjoyed. They go to the Playboy Club. They get involved with underworld people. They're playing games. And they're involved. Obviously, when it's underworld, they will be involved with gangsters. So, Rinaldo Cantable, I'll come to that later. Okay. And uh, he has, so Charlie has a Mercedes-Benz car. So Charlie, the, the novel opens with, the novel opens with, please mute your mic. Somebody is still on. Yashma ji, your mic on. Hai. Please mute kariye. Morning, morning. What happened like this? Please mute your device. Because of all our interesting in, uh, lesson, they are listening. Please understand. And it, dis and it disturbs the flow because um, this is online. I'm trying to 
go slow and help you understand the story first okay someone with the name ma student your mic is also on ms i'm trying to find out who else has to be muted Okay. Who else is this M M A student? M S. Somebody with the name ID M S. You have to mute yourself. Okay. Right. So. Um. They get involved. Uh, so the day. Charlie Citrine is now recollecting for us. That was the day he went out, and then he saw that his Mercedes-Benz sports car is vandalized. And who is who has done that? It is the gang, gangster Cantabel. Why did they do that? Because they were playing games, dead games. They are involved with underworld people. so they are playing a lot of games and over a de gaming debt because he didn't want to pay money to cantable okay why did charlie not want to pay money to cantable because cantable was cheating him out okay so cantable was cheating him and so he didn't pay him back and so his car is destroyed so this was the day on which the narrator begins his story and takes us back so the, he wants to go back to chicago and he's feeling guilty for not meeting humbolt and he is also angry resents the money he pays in taxes and also the divorce settlements he gave to his ex wife dennis how did charlie citrain somebody who didn't have a lot of financial success at the beginning somebody who depended on humbold make so much money i told you he became a very very successful writer and towards the end of the novel you will realize that the uh, his writing has also been selected for a screenplay and a movie so they get copyrights and that's when he becomes all the more rich okay so charlie citroen and humbold they go about enjoying their life a bohemian lifestyle as i told you playing games drinking getting involved with a number of um women obviously because you know when you have money suddenly you think money is everything and sometimes unfortunately uh, we lose our moral standards once you, we become very rich okay so at one stage charlie citrain also becomes uh, very very uh, depressed and he goes into therapy therapy means clinical therapy for psychological counseling because his adolescent childhood lover sweetheart demi she dies in a plane crash along with her parents they were traveling to south africa i think and all all three of them died in a plane crash so citrine is disappointed depressed cantable visits him cantable is a gangster remember and he is the one who tells forms this friendship with charlie but gradually drags him into all criminal schemes 
Charlie is now becoming a successful and an accomplished writer. Cantable wants to you take the help of Charlie so that Cantable's wife can also get a position in the university. Now, why is Cantable a gangster visiting Charlie? Okay. I have highlighted this. So Cantable wants Charlie's help so that Cantable's wife also can get a position in the university. Okay. The friendship between Charlie and Hamboy. The friendship between Charlie and Humboldt is very deep and great. They exchange blank checks as a symbol of brotherhood. Okay. Anytime anybody goes broke or you know any other trouble, any uncertain future, they decide that they will be together with each other. Even though Citroen supports Humboldt's bid for promotion, his friend Humboldt takes money from Charlie's account shortly afterwards because he's totally broke. So the two friends who are great friends suddenly begin to fall out with each other. Now that Charlie is divorced from his wife, Dennis, his friendship with Humboldt is also disturbed and almost broken because human beings, jealousy and envy is a great factor, whether we like it or not. And Charlie is now becoming a very successful writer, accomplished, very rich now. So he is, is uh, attracted and is in um, having seen this young woman, Renata. But he doesn't want to marry her. And Charlie fears that Renata and her mother, the Senora, are trying to trap him into a permanent relationship. Why is it that these, the mother and daughter want Charlie? to be married because now Charlie is very rich. Remember, he's paying a lot of money on taxes because he's very rich, though he's divorced. Obviously, his wife, Dennis, ensured that she took as much money as possible as alimony. Now again, he's become rich. So whatever money probably that he is likely to have Renata and the mother want Charlie to marry Renata so that Renata's future is secured. Charlie now begins to look at questions of death. Uh, there is a society called Anthroposophy. Anthro. Sophie. Okay. Anthro means man. So, um, man, death. So, Charlie and even Humboldt um, think that um, though human beings die, their spirits are hovering around and we can contact them. They think we can have friendship with the spirits of the dead people. 
so we find charlie reflecting a lot on death and there is a society as i said he has friends and people this is about their personal life humble in the divorce proceedings when dennis is suing and wants as much money as possible charlie has employed lawyers no doubt but see this talks about you know this high end society where nobody has any kind of morals charlie is now distrusting his own defense lawyers the lawyers who should be you know defending on him and fighting against um against uh, dennis getting as much money as possible right yes he wants a divorce but he wants as less money to part with as possible charlie is harassed by divorce judge opanovich he is doubtful and distrusting his own defense lawyers dennis is critical of the whole thing but she proposes that they marry why because she knows that any way any day she will be better off with the financial position if she is still with charlie now why do you think sitre charlie is distrusting his own um defense not please mute yourself how many times should we tell you why don't you understand the moment you log in please mute yourself why do you think charlie is not able to trust his own lawyers now uh, my hunch and my suspicion is that dennis probably is uh, having some kind of affair right there is every possibility that dennis has fallen in love with the lawyers okay citrine so charlie citrine meets the partners and they kidnap by cantable obviously because they are dealing with gang- gangsters and cantable takes them to a even more crooked financier who arrest them and look at who comes to charlie citrine's rescue charlie is rescued by the daughter of his childhood sweetheart and then he visits naomi lords who criticizes him about regarding his attitude to women so charlie has a number of affairs he is in and out of love or sexual relations with a number of people so his friend george swibel remember i told you remember george swibel and cantwell george swibel his friend is the one who advises charlie to marry renata at least while he still has a chance 
and George Swivel is the one who tells Charlie that Cantable is trying to make money and profit at the expense of Charlie. So Charlie stops giving or paying the money to Cantable. And therefore, Cantable tries to do all this vendetta activities and destroy the Mercedes Benz and have them arrested. Okay. He discusses Humboldt's legacy with Orlando Huggins. Humboldt has died, but he left some papers. So now that he has died, Humboldt has left some papers. So Charlie wants to get those papers. So he goes to collect those papers. And when he collects the legacy, the gift of Humboldt, what is there in that legacy? What is there in that letter? He writes finally about Charlie. At one point, Humboldt was angry with Charlie and they began to be almost like enemies. But that Humboldt, before he died, he pardoned, excused the bad behavior. And when, hum, when Charlie wrote a movie script, okay, please get this clearly. Charlie wrote a script for a movie, but Humboldt uh, was very angry. Remember I told you about jealousy and envy. Humboldt was very angry and then he said, who is Charlie? How can he write this movie script? You know, he, he really can't be as, uh, as uh, rich or as famous or as accomplished as he is turning out to be, okay? But all those two things, especially these two particular things, Humboldt wrote down and uh, regretted and sought the forgiveness. So in a sense, when, uh, just before he died, Humboldt tried to pacify with Charlie, his long time, mentor, mentee and protégé. So that was like peacemaking between these two friends. So that was like trying to reconcile with Charlie, at least on paper. So Charlie feels very happy and uh, very happy that Humboldt has realized the bad way in which he was treated. And he regrets that he did not visit Humboldt when he was in this mental hospital. And he also regrets the fact that nobody went to bury Humboldt. Charlie also realizes that his brother is supposed to have an open heart surgery. And then Thaxter, his friend, calls with the news of publishing new publishing contracts. And then he meets Humboldt. Uh, Charlie is now trying to, uh, what do we say, make peace or do some justice for Humboldt at least after he has died. So he goes and meets Kathleen, the ex-wife of Humboldt. Kathleen also was given that same movie plot as a gift from Humboldt. 
and she gave it to the agents to make a movie out of it. While Charlie visits his brother Julius, Julius advises him a lot. After the operation is successful, Trim, uh, Charlie goes to Renata, but Renata um, marries Undertaker Flonsley. Remember? Charlie's friends advise to marry Renata while he has the chance. Why? Because probably by that time she was already two timing Flonsley and Charlie. Citrine is now, Charlie is now in paucity of friends, uh, finance. And he spends his time trying to communicate with people who are dead. Remember, I talked about anthroposophy. So he thinks that he can still talk to dead people. He is now in a very bad shape because what he wrote as a movie script, Humboldt. Um, gave it to, actually Humboldt um, ridiculed him, insulted him. Because they were both together, Humboldt gave that to his wife Kathleen also. So that's the gift. And Kathleen gave it to the agents. And now Cantable comes on the scene saying that the movie has been made into a very successful film. And Cantable wants some stake in the copyright. Citrine flies with him to Paris, where they watch the film. And then they negotiate a deal with lawyers for the film. And um, Charlie now has to divide the profit that he gets with so many people, with Cantable, with Kathleen probably, and with Humboldt's uncle, Waldemar, because he was the one who gave him that, those papers, okay? And uh, whatever money Citrin now gets, this is very, very important. He uses his share of the film money to rebury Humboldt and his mother. So that is the summary and the plot of Humboldt's gift. So what is it that Saul Bellow was trying to tell us in this novel? I hope you got an idea. It's not uh, very concrete at times. Saul Bellow is a Jewish author. Okay. So, Saul Bellow, uh, Jewish people sometimes hmm, are mocked at or insulted, you know, they make fun of them. And there's been uh, instances where the author's lifestyle is also seen. Saul Bellow's life is seen in the life of Humboldt at times. Okay. The novel tries to tell us about how American life has become 
a very bohemian lifestyle. I have given for you here the definition and meaning of bohemian. Please read that up. This is again another summary, so you can read that. So what is the whole point? So Humboldt's gift is the story of artistic friendship and rivalry. So what is the theme? Let's go into the themes. It gives us a picture of American life in a comical manner. I've taken down summaries from various sources. This is the characterization. Okay. The writer is trying to tell us A few things through this. So the structure of Humboldt's gift, the novel, is something very, very strange. We are taken back and forth, back and forth. So, what is it? Okay. So, the themes are the role of the artist. It's not there in my document. Um, how many pages does your uh, book have? If you want, uh, I was able to locate my book. Maybe one of you, please, I request. Uh, who, who should I request if you have your book? Renuka, I think. Renuka, please unmute your mic. And if you have your book, do you have your book with you, Renuka? Madam, I have the book with me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Who's that? Madam, I'm Sham Sundar. Sham Sundar. Okay, thank you, Sham Sundar. Uh, so, how many pages does your book have? I'm just wondering I, because I didn't go to collect the latest books. So, how many pages does your book have? Sir, madam, it's a humble gift one from 292 uh, almost to okay. so three, 309, 309, madam. Okay, it so means 20 pages page, almost. Yeah, so come to page 306 and let's see. If it's the same. 306, madam. Yeah, 306 is where you have the themes. Okay, mm -hmm. right, madam. Is it the same book that we both have? Uh, yes, madam. Yes, okay. madam. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, those of you who have the books, you can open to page 306. Okay, ma'am. And then you can, um, I mean, I'm just trying to make it a little easy for you to go through the notes when you have, because not everything is available on the net. Um, so, the role of the artist in the society, particularly the American society, is important. Because American society is an advanced technological society. 
and that is constantly controlled by business interests and money is something that is playing a vital role so why is it please underline why is it that so many american poets have committed suicide so does the artist like humboldt okay why do they degenerate into a madman can uh, please, please try and recollect that instance where humboldt was given an important position a chairperson's position in the princeton university because he is a great poet because he is a great artist but they didn't want to give him any kind of financial support so this is one of the most important things that saul bellow the writer is trying to highlight focus and sensitize why is it that he wanted to run over his own wife how could he become so wicked how could he become so imbecile how could he become so um so cranky so mad so insane that he had to be sent to a mental asylum remember he he took out his gun and began to uh, threaten everyone all those instances it's because the society the american society gave him a chair position but not financial help if you remember even in our olden times when we had kings okay raj darbars so you had poets who would be given financial help right otherwise an artist cannot survive but the money minded american technological society wants the artist without supporting the artist that's one important thing secondly the artist has a lot of temptations if you look at the life of many successful uh, many accomplished artists from all fields i am not only talking about poetry and literature but in many fields sometimes their standards of life become compromised because they have too many temptations just like his the mentor charlie also goes through a lot of challenges and difficulties both have accepted that kind of a bohemian lifestyle but charlie at least realizes that he doesn't want to um meet the same fate that his mentor humboldt met at the end of his life so he's trying and desperately working towards avoiding that kind of an end so theme number 1 number 2 5.2 i'm going through the nature of death remember i talked about how charlie is constantly worried about death but he also thinks that in uh, human spirit and soul do exist i'm reading the last sentence in that paragraph as sol bellow's novel ends the reader finds charlie looking him sorry locking himself in his humble room in a boarding house house in madrid spending hours reading to and talking with the dead 
So there's some kind of an obsession of Charlie with death. But what you do when you are aware and so acutely conscious of this fact of death is something very, very important. Charlie, unfortunately, comes forth as another mad person, right? When you know you are going to die as and your life is so uncertain, what would you and I like to do? At least I, as far as I am concerned, I would like to live life as meaningfully and as purposefully and as usefully as possible. Do some things which I will be remembered. Do some things which are good for the society, for the human beings around me. It could be one person whom we, should, we can help. But what is Charlie doing? Charlie is spending hours reading to and talking with the dead. So strange. So that is why I said, in a sense, I find Charlie very mad too. Okay. Another theme is the theme of art versus commerce. So how, um, what is the relationship? Should art remain as an art all the time? Or can you commercialize, can you make business out of your art? These are questions which trouble society all the time, which trouble artists all the time. Okay. So when an artist creates a painting, a book or a play, right, it is basically an expression of the artist. But should he make a business out of it? Why not? Because He's spending hours together on that. Yes, the, uh, no amount of money sometimes can equal a great piece of art. At the same time, somewhere the artist has to live. So somewhere he has to um, ensure that he makes money out of his art, right? And then um, Humboldt's gift, the novel also talks about the relationship between, I'm going to page 307, the relationship between the material and the spiritual world. Charlie and Humboldt, run after the pleasures of life, the material pleasures of life too. They want, Charlie wants Mercedes-Benz sports car that too, and he bought it. He pays taxes. He's an artist, no doubt. But he's also involved with money. He's involved with Cantable, a gangster, a young you know, gangster who, who deals with quite a few criminal situations. Right? As an artist who, who's capable of that great art, Humboldt, uh, can, Charlie can um, Charlie can um, remain above the material pursuits, above the material pleasures of life, above the dangers of money, the love of money. But uh, he, Charlie can remain spiritual, but then as a human being, he also wants to enjoy all the 
material benefits of life. Okay. So the technique of Humboldt, I'll come to page 302. So if you've come to page 302, just above the appreciation subheading two, I want you to go up and underline those two lines, three lines. In that paragraph, Kathleen arrives in Madrid. Look at the last line. So the Caldofredo settlement is $80,000 plus $5,000. Okay. And Charlie turns down this lucrative script writing job to pursue a different life. He's now able to make more money by writing the scripts. But then he says no. And he spent, remember, he spends time, hours together, talking with the dead and reading to the dead. So maybe in some way, Charlie realized that no amount of money is going to help him. So he's able to overcome the material pursuits, the temptation for money, and whatever he thinks is spiritual, he's trying to maintain his spiritual realm. Okay? Since I, want, I completed the fifth theme, the material versus the spiritual. I wanted to connect it with this before I go for appreciation. So I hope you have un underlined that. Okay, I'll look at the uh, techniques. Second line, please underline. It has long episodic plot. What do we mean by episodic plot? Episodic means there is no continuity of storyline. He tells us about the past. He tells us about the present. He tells us about Catherine. He tells us about Renata. He tells us about... So the novel has all kinds of episodes. One, uh, sometimes they are not... They are not chronologically connected. Ma, you can hear yourself. Why don't you mute? To avoid all this, I'm not even asking you to answer any questions like I asked you yesterday. So I don't know why suddenly you go unmute. I don't know who is this MS. Please mute yourself. If it's an admin, that's okay. But still, uh, I don't know. Okay. All right. So um, episodes and episodes. One incident here, one incident there. So it tells us about life also sometimes. It doesn't make much sense at times, right? So Humboldt's uh, come to the second uh, point. It's an example of postmodern literature because we are trying to explore the characters and it is self-referential. Self-referential means this also has autobiographical elements. So this talks about Saul Bellow's life also as an artist, as a Jewish artist, writer. 
then you have a, a storytelling a variety of topics and characters so come to 2.4 some of the things uh, you can read on yourself by yourself so, so 2.4 underline you we get an insight into the life of chicago underworld the life of genius people like humboldt and charlie the life of people who from genius become also insane life life that talks about the various sexual attractions love loss friendship life death forgiveness so we get a slice of life from every aspect then you have some real life stories the impact okay um on page 303 characterization number 1 underline charlie is the central character number 2 he is the narrator and number 3 please underline much of the action in the novel takes place in charlie's mind in the form of memories speculations and flashbacks and come to the last line of that paragraph and underline charlie is an accidental success and now he is preyed upon preyed upon means he is becoming a victim by people of people like cantabil okay and they want to use him or his money now that he is becoming very very successful uh you can read more about charlie's characterization i don't want to spend a lot of time remember i somehow have to make time for a lot of things so come to page 3 not 5 the style and structure of can humbles gifts is very very important structure as i told you it's episodic the novel is divided into sections of uneven length and each section is unnumbered okay you can read up all this and try to make some notes on this come to page 306 just about the themes i want you to focus on this classic end so the novel is very very interesting towards its end because it ends on a positive note where he is happy that humboldt forgave and reconciled at least on paper he made lot of money and he was able to go and visit and rebury humboldt so the ending is important too so the gift of humboldt that he left at the end on paper is the great legacy okay so the title is justified remember yesterday i talked about how title is very very important the title is justified and uh, you have sol below the jewish writer 
and his Jewish elements coming through this novel, Humboldt's Gift. It's 10, 11. I'll give you four or five minutes break if you require. We'll take five minutes break and start with the next topic. I know I won't be able to complete it, but it's not possible for us to have one session for only one. So take a five minute break and then we'll take up maybe one short story so that we can complete it, okay? If you are not going to take a break, those of you who are sitting here, you will uh, we'll take up this a short story, come to the end of the notes, 480 page, Nightfall. It's okay, start reading that. I'll, I'll start your class after five minutes. <laughs> 